Are you unsure about how good, how bad Rift is? Are you not really going to read the content because who asked? Well, today I have a bit of an explanation, showcase, quick summary. It's only been about a couple hours since the content came out, so I'll kind of go through a bit of what the boss does, but ultimately, I have some good news and I have some bad news. The bad news is that if you want to be energy efficient or to actually do this content without blowing your brains out, uh, unfortunately, you're going to have to get a couple of five stars while also plus 15ing them. It is now obvious that with the haste and tamarind banner available, they were specifically catering this content to be done with these two characters. Now, obviously you may be able to replace Tamarin with someone like Mascot Hazel, but Mascot Hazel requires you to do a specialty change. That being said, most people have Tamarin. However, unfortunately you are going to kind of need investment in a lot of these characters. I'll be honest with you guys, the characters that I have right now are pretty decently geared and I'll show that in a second. But the real kicker is probably going to be Haste because Haste, as you know, is not a good character. I have a plus 11 haste that does have 234 speed, 106 effectiveness, he has crit chance and crit damage, and he has torn sleeve, which is an epic artifact. Now, a bit of a PSA, this is definitely not an early to mid game piece of content that you should be doing. Maybe after Kane comes out, or maybe if you happen to get some of these characters earlier, it will be more accessible to more players. However, as I see right now, having 234 speed on a five star thief that is only usable in PVE is kind of unrealistic for new players. Maybe more realistic if you're a late game player. Uh, however, the next character that we have, and as you can see here, uh, we have my Tamron. Now my Tamron, as you can see, is max or is maxed on skill one and has five molas in S2, which is already kind of more than most people I know that use Tamron. Tamron has kind of been lauded as this character that you don't have to do that much investment in and you can clear. So as you can see here, I have 238 speed, which is also very, very unrealistic for early mid game players. So again, guys, I do want to preface that this is a clear or this is a way that you can clear uh, with the team that I'm about to show with some exceptions to RNG. Uh, however, generally speaking uh this team should work you do need about 105 effectiveness uh in order to actually debuff this boss because it has 120 effect resistance and just to go back to haste for a moment i know you guys are probably wondering why i have torn sleeve why am i using haste is there a replacement for haste the answer is kind of no the only alternative that you could potentially use is surin who is also kind of a feels bad character if you do end up playing pvp and you use uh you use certain for racing or as a speed imprint that may be an opportunity or that may be a reason for you to have certain built however haste is simply too good because he has the defense break and you need to debuff this boss a lot so he doesn't gain the buff that increases his damage overall in short the way that this boss works is that there needs to be 10 debuffs or buffs uh present on the boss and either you can prevent him from having buffs by debuffing him or he'll have more buffs than debuffs and ultimately beat up your team really quickly so what you need to do is have a lot of debuffs on haste and you'll see in a second he's pretty much immune to most things that aren't bleed or defense break so torn sleeve unfortunately kind of slots in as one of your better options and then uh, in terms of investment you definitely want to have at least max effect hit chance on your s3 and s2 and probably your s1 as well to be honest with you because the more opportunities that you have to debuff the better you don't want him to get buffs don't get screwed guys now the other half of the team composition that isn't the healer and the debuffer is obviously the damage dealer and mercedes to no one's surprise is also really really good just because she gives attack buff she has the s2 that can proc twice if you have attack buff a present and you also have magic for friends now as you can see this is also kind of realistic when it comes to gearing because this is a 236 mercedes i you know everyone does get her at triple s but investing in a four star that isn't god tier for for pvp and pve is kind of a blow to your overall resource count my magic for friends isn't even plus 30 because in all honesty i never really use this character but i did just have to bite the bullet and i'm still considering upgrading some more but as you can see here i'm at three molagora anyways guys this is probably going to be your best in slot damage dealer there are probably arguments for other characters like maybe zealot carmaine rose or ball and Cezanne, but this is the only character that you technically get for free and you don't have to specially change. She is fortunately going to increase the overall DPS and speed of the clears by a decent amount. And in case if she pee pee poofs, she can always come back to life. But arguably the most painful character, especially if you're a new player that you're going to have to upgrade 
is Charlotte just because in terms of investment you don't really want to have to upgrade Charlotte unless if you're already using her now I personally have never been a Charlotte player in Guild Wars and stuff like that however she is good right now against characters like Emma Landy or Navy Captain Landy if that is your niche or if that is your choice However, for me, even investing the six Mola kind of hurt because I kind of always swore off of Charlotte. However, what she does really well is that she stays above 50% health, which prevents the boss from doing this AoE additional pop damage. The boss does AoE damage if you're below 50% health when hitting the front tank. So in this case, the fact that she does damage and is able to heal and can also wear crown of glory it makes her probably the best in slot tank as well now again this is assuming that you're looking for a slower and unless if they develop something better later on and i'll kind of explain like another part of the kit later like uh, unless if you get an upgrade that in that waves this requirement away or if you're able to clear faster this character and uh, pretty much every character that i've listed with the exception of tamron from maybe mascot hazel will basically be the best in slot characters so i apologize guys those are all the stats but as you can see, or to kind of run down like the way that this content works, uh, this boss is kind of a piece of crap. So the way that he works is that he strips buffs and he also burns and does like a bunch of damage with his uh, with with all of his skills. Uh, he also has defense penetration, which is also a pain in the butt. And as you can see here, it says after attacking when the target's health is below 50% health, uh, you deal additional damage proportional to its attack to all enemies. So obviously your front tank ideally doesn't drop below 50% health, which is also why you have Charlotte who has defense buff every time she gets hit and also heals on S1 or S3. Annihilation protocol, as you can see here, kind of allows it to continue cycling, does additional damage, it detonates burns if you have it. So Xeon does a lot of damage, assuming that they're able to use this proc. Ideally you want to cleanse, which is why you have Tamarin here. Here. and when it says the target is granted stealth it increases damage dealt it is what it is this is just his damage skill part two now unknown defect is the actual most annoying concept of this boss and what makes it difficult which is that arc which means that he gains additional defense penetration can stack up to 10 times or technically up to 10 times and the number of arc buffs that can be present fluctuates based on how many debuffs you apply onto the boss so that's why haste and probably characters like certain are best in slot you can't really go without this you can't just straight one shot this this is kind of a boss that you need to debuff and finally we should mention that you aren't able to do dual attacks and it doesn't matter if you revive or if you pv poof like even if mercedes revives you still can't dual attack so it is unfortunate tamarin doesn't get to use your dual attack which does slow things down but you do still kind of need a, a cycler on s2 or you do kind of need a cycler still and a cleanser the other thing about the skill is that it says for every fifth attack suffered it activates its like basic skill attack that attacks everything and it also extends debuff durations of and also extends debuff durations of the caster by one turn and when attacked, it's unaffected by penetration. In other words, guys, you can't use pen set on this. Most of the time, you're going to be using haste or all these other characters, and you're going to need hit set or crit set anyways. So it's not that big a deal. However, that's kind of the rundown of the character. Long story short, he does a bunch of damage. Make sure to have a cleanser. Be fast so you can do a bunch of damage. And also be sure to debuff the enemy as much as possible. Finally, as a PSA, you can see all the things that it's immune from. You can't use DDJ. It can't be unbuffable, stigma, re redirected, provoked, provoked poison slept restricted stun silence defense uh decrease speed so all these things are pretty typical but you can't get penned you can't push it back you can't reduce its cooldowns or you can't increase its cooldowns and you can't use ddj so with all that in mind guys let's just get into a run now i do want to point out that i have cleared it once uh at the time of or the at the recording of this video so there will be a an additional attack down that gets provided from the character that's in the back line something or something to that effect so in terms of like how legitimate like a one-time clear is this is going to be a bit nuanced just because i have one clear under my belt however what you should know about this fight is that you technically don't have a a set number of times that you have to clear it by the only thing that really the only thing that is really important when it comes to this fight is that you cannot fail more than three times or else the encounter fully resets and you lose all your energy and like the health uh, the health of the boss resets however if you make it through the rift protection which is essentially the hard pity of the fight if you make sure that you survive at least through the rift protection here you do end up clearing or the, the the fight doesn't end up resetting so so long as you either beat the boss or survive the 40 turns here the fight won't reset so in essence you can continue doing this fight over and over and over and over and expending energy until you get enough clears or until you get enough upgrades to your team however what that does mean is that this is an insane energy sink and even though the energy cost does go down 
This means that you're probably going to be spending anywhere between like 100 to 120 energy per clear. So basically what that means is that unless if they make this content significantly easier with the upgrades later on, you might want to consider holding back from doing this, especially if you're a new player and still going through stuff like Hunt 13s. While all this has been going on, as you can see in the background, uh, there's a bit of a juggle back and forth between how much health I have, how much damage I'm taking, and how many debuffs are on the team. Uh, Xeon is kind of just beating my head in, and in all honesty, if you look at the health of my Mercedes right now, she's really low. Um, and now you may be wondering whether or not life steal or something like that is worth it And the answer is probably no Unfortunately because the way that you really the thing that you really want to take into consideration right now is that especially when you're early on I kind of don't think I can survive this fight without just trying to get to like the the hard hard pity of the fight I get really really low as you can see here my haste is already in danger of of dying so what I actually want here is probably something like just the 40 turns to go by as quickly as possible charlotte and tamarin end up being like arguably one of the last people available as you can see here my haste is is actually just on death's door um and he actually ends up disappearing here so again this is one of the risks that you have to take with this team however i don't think there actually is an alternative to this you can maybe add a little bit more health or you know maybe trying to find a really quick lifesteal set however i think just in terms of damage and value it is probably more ideal for you to just end up doing as much damage as possible clearing the the fights early and then just accepting that so long as you survive the runs early or so so long as you make it to the 40 turns you could just get through the content uh, I'll do like a bit of a speed through like I'll, I'll be here recording or I'll, I'll just have like a no cam like Explanation of what or like a I'll just have like a no cam like clear through just so you can see what a clear looks like But in essence guys, it just looks like do as many debuffs as possible survive and just get teleported out so that you don't lose You know your energy and then hopefully by the end of the content you're able to Get an upgrade that makes you do more damage and clear this boss even faster because in all honesty although I said that the fight is really toxic for energy. Getting two pieces of gear or getting like one of four sets of gear on a multi-hunt content or on a multi-hunt piece of content is insane value. Anyways, guys, as you can see, that was Rift clear. It takes about five to six runs, even with having the attack down augment or et cetera, et cetera. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this video. There's obviously different teams that may work or may not work. But honestly, even with this, which I consider to probably be like the best in slot, it looks kind of sketchy. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you learned something... <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed, learned something, etc., etc. If you enjoyed this video, though, make sure to like, comment, turn the notification bell. Let me know what you're doing with Rift, if you think it's fair. If it's not fair, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Make sure to check out all my platforms. <clears throat> I'll see you on the next one. Make sure to check out all my platforms. I'll see you all next time. I'll see you all next time. Make sure to check out my platforms and all that jazz for help, infographics, all that jazz if you need or want to talk about Rifts. This content is pretty ridiculous. Anyways, guys, adios. See you later.